Good afternoon, everybody, or good morning, or good evening. I'm guessing that you're watching this on or around March uh, 10th, uh, and I greet you in the name of the Lord, in the one who was and is and is to come. Amen, and God bless you. This is our midweek moment. This is Pastor Doug coming to you live from the homestead. Pardon my voice. I mentioned Sunday at both churches that I'm still a little horsey so to speak, from uh, being intubated during my hernia surgery now two weeks back. I'm, I'm doing well. Today and this week, we're having gorgeous, gorgeous weather. Are we not? I'm recording this on Monday. Today was in the mid-60s. I had an almost two-hour walk, uh, probably too much too soon after my surgery, but so I'm a little... Uh, you know, out of energy here, but I'm wanting to record uh, for you and get a midweek moment to you in a theme around spring cleaning. Spring cleaning, right? All of us probably do it, or we've certainly heard about it. For some, spring cleaning is an intensive, deep dive into the home and a cleaning we will go. I recommend this Clorox, uh, let's see, Fragansia, Fragansia. It says right on there, look at that. See that word? Spring. I am spraying spring cleaning around in my home. This has a fragrance, fragrance to it. So over yonder on the uh, kitchen counter, I have some ant friends who've started to come patrol around my toaster to see what's available. And I'm not a fan of putting Raid down on the kitchen countertop, so I spray them with this. And so far, they are coming back and they're dying right on the spot. So spring cleaning may be some, something like that. Some of you might be, you know, super dusters, right? Rainbow colored uh, duster that uh, can be used in your home if you're looking to do some dusting of the ceiling fan blades. Maybe I opened windows today and all the windows are filthy. That's a spring cleaning topic for many of us. We might want to just go around the house with a little bit of Febreze, a little fra fabric, I can hardly talk, fabric freshener, freshener of fabric. In fact, it says so right down there in the bottom, fabric refresher, right? This, friends, is the model of the spiritual life. I'm not necessarily talking about sweeping and mopping in terms of spring cleaning today. Let's, you and I, think about spring cleaning our spiritual lives in a refreshing way, right? Febreze, this is God at work refreshing us each and every day. If we, in our little bitty pea brains, will, will be aware of God's desire to refresh us, we can move into daily living with spring cleaning, right? Daily living with spring cleaning, the spiritual life I'm talking about today. Now, all of these things that one might do in one's home, including if you wanted to do some Lysol disinfectant, this all takes physical labor, some work. A family unit comes together, individuals in the home, you hire someone, but this cleaning gets done by other people, right? You don't necessarily, you spray, but then you got to wipe it down and you got to do your cleaning. God has done already the work in our spiritual spring cleaning. All, all you and I need to do is to open up our hearts, minds, and souls and let God cleanse us and let God cleanse us spiritually, right? Sometimes that means we need to do some cleaning. Maybe there's some things in our lives that need to be thrown out or things that are dirty that need to be tossed, right? Uh, over here, let me see if I can get this out and up to you without throwing out my back. This is Pastor Doug's laundry basket that sets near the entry. And as I go through my, my days each week, if something needs to go to Goodwill, you know, I don't know about you guys. Clearly, Pastor needs to get some weight off as he recovers from his surgery, but some of my clothes seem to shrink well, since the last time I wore them. 
And it's crazy how that happens. Sometimes, especially if they're a B uh, article of clothing or a C article of clothing, they go into the goodwill and they give them to somebody else. So sometimes we need to declutter the spiritual life, right? To give some more time to God, to open up, right? To open up and to be aware of God's ability to spring clean us. Amen? So spring cleaning, we're listening. On the 10th, we will be 10 days away from the first day of spring. We're changing our clocks this weekend, don't forget. And spring cleaning is underway. And God does God's best work in spring cleaning, certainly during Lent. And you may be thinking, well, Pastor Doug, Lent is not a time for spiritual spring cleaning. Most, oh, no, no, it is. In Lent, we are in touch. We are decluttering our sin and removing it in Christ to give it to God, to be sorry for it and pass it on to God, right? That's Lenten 101. That's Lent 101. To be aware of our sin, to be sorry for it, that's called penance or to repent and to give that all to God. God longs to take that and do some spring cleaning in our hearts, minds, bodies, and souls. And it's an everyday thing. It's an everyday thing. And one of the great verses, now there are many one could look up to find our, uh, things about cleansing. Psalms have a lot of this imagery. Certainly Psalm 51, created me a clean heart, O God. These midweek moments are designed to, to give you an idea, a thought that you then could look up and find out more information on your own. Come on, friends. Don't just sit there and receive. Jump in and be active. Look up cleansing in the Bible. Look up spring cleaning spiritually and Google it and let me know what you find out. Here in the Bible, Lamentations. Lamentations. It's an odd little book. Comes uh, after the Psalms and the Proverbs, and I think it's after Ecclesiastes. Uh, it is a, it, um, a book of lament, but it holds one of the greatest verses in Lamentations, chapter 3, 23. And it, the Bible says, because of the Lord's faithful love, we do not perish, and his mercies never end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Remember that great hymn of the church? Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. I should be singing morning by morning, right? Because, so the Bible, friends, spring cleaning spiritually. Because of the Lord's faithful love. Hello. Hello. Are you in there? <laughs> faithful love because of the, the bible says because of god's faithful love we get spring clean his mercies his mercies never end hello 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 they are new every morning when we wake up in the morning do you ever wake up spiritually refreshed i know we don't do that every day i don't do it every day but to the degree it's possible especially in this last half of Lent, why don't we wake up tomorrow morning and bring this verse to mind? Because of the Lord's faithful love, I'm in Lamentations, the book of the Bible named Lamentations, uh, in chapter 3, 23, Great is Thy Faithfulness, the title of that great hymn of the church. Now, here's another one that I like. I used this one before. Chapter, uh, sorry, sorry, Psalm 40. Psalm 40, listen to this. I use this psalm when I tell the duck story. You'll probably remember that story of the ducks that were caught in the sewer and the maintenance guy brought them out and mother called them and they all went off together. And I use that same theme around this Psalm 40. I waited patiently for the Lord. And the Lord turned to me and heard my cry for help, says Psalm 40. You and I cry for help because of our sin are turning away from God. And God turned to me and heard my cry, and God brought me up out of the desolate pit, out of the muddy clay, set my feet on a solid rock, and gave me a new song to sing. Hello. Spiritual spring cleaning, two great verses. 
His mercies are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. In Psalm 40, I waited patiently for the Lord in my sin. The Lord turned to me and heard me, heard you and heard me cry for help, brought me up out of a desolate pit, out of the muddy clay, set my feet on a solid rock and gave me a new song to sing. Hallelujah. This is true every day. When you sin and when you fall short, when you sit in daily living and feel cluttered in, inside and you feel dusty inside and you don't feel very fresh, pull back the curtains, open up the windows. I opened my windows today, put a fan in the window, circulate. I'm a fan guy, by the way. I'm a fan. If you didn't know that, I'm a fan guy. There's nothing like spring cleaning that a fan cannot help. See, I have a little one right on my desktop running right now. Notice my hair blowing. <laughs> I just have to have some air circulating in my own world. I mean, I have a fan in my bedroom. I have a fan over yonder. Uh, if you didn't know this, St. Andrews, people saw me perspire my first couple Sundays. I, I think it was MJ bought me a fan and it sets under the pulpit. You can't really see it. I felt bad for uh, Jeanette Burbrink, who was lecturing Sunday and the fan was on. I should have shut it off before she stepped up there. But anyway, I got a fan circulating. And at Faith, I Faith Lutheran folks, you know I've got a fan over there. There's no air circulating in that, in that place. And, and Faith Lutheran, know that when we get decent weather, we're going to put those, need to find out who has those screens, bring them to the church, and we're going to put those screens up in the windows at Faith Lutheran, and we're going to open up the windows on nice days to let a breeze in. There's no air moving in that space. And I know St. Andrews doesn't have a lot of air moving either. I like to move air in my own life. Always got the cracked window in my car. Always have a fan around if I can. And it's just how I have come to live my life. I like to have some air circulating. But you listen, here's, here's a drawing to, to give another angle to this. A lot of times, in my opinion, what holds us back is we're stuck in the past. We might have some guilt over the past. We might have some anger at ourselves about the past. We may be depressed and hurt and wounded by the past. I get that. That's true of all of us in many ways. This is why we're telling our stories on Wednesday nights, and that needs to get handled, you know, by a professional to talk with someone, by medicine, whatever you need, but we don't live in the past. It's over and gone. You and I cannot go back one minute and change anything. We can take responsibility for what we said or did, and we can apologize if we need to. We can make amends. We can do some things along those lines. But bottom line is the past is over and gone. And in the same way, tomorrow isn't here yet. All of us, are, including myself, get anxious about the next day, which isn't here. And this is why Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6, look at the birds of the air. On my walk today and in my backyard, beautiful red cardinals. I could hear the, the robins singing that beautiful spring song. See, and what God tells us in God's word in Matthew 6 is look at the birds of the air, see how God takes care of them and the flowers and the trees, how much more God will take care of you and I, says the Lord in Matthew chapter 6. So I drew you a little picture here. Let me help you with it. Of course, that's me in the middle, as you can see. Is this helpful? I can't tell. Yeah, this is me, yours truly. And this is the past behind me, crossed out, over, gone, done. This is the future. It's not here yet. No sense living into it, right? It's not here. The present. This is where we live, friends. Like it or not, it's hard to do, but we live in the present, in the present moment. It's why the, why do you think the word gift and present mean the same thing, right? We live in the present. If you need copies of this, I'll be happy to make them for you. <laughs> we live in the present. We can't go back. And God forgives all of that. That's all been forgiven. And the future, 
God is already there. We need not worry about the future. We waste, Mark Twain said, listen, Mark Twain said, I've known a great many worries, most of which never happen. Never happen. I do it. We all do it. It's human. It's our sinful condition, but that's not where it ends. We need to take that sinful condition, own it, toss it, allow God to cleanse us, allow God's mercies to be new every morning, allow God to draw us up out of the miry pit of our sin and set us on a solid rock and give us a new song to sing. Great is thy faithfulness. Great. (laughs) And friends, in Lent, during the season of Lent, the Sundays are not counted. Those are seen as little Christs, little, little days of worship in the risen Christ, the Sundays of Lent. Now, we're in Lent right now. We understand that. We just had the third Sunday. We're in between the third and the fourth Sunday. Tune in tonight, friends, at 7 or 6 o'clock if you want to do fellowship. And listen to the stories that are being told by members of both churches. All of us have a story, and all of our stories intersect as the body of Christ, and they intersect with Christ. And you and I live, watch this. Let's see if I'll be able to do this. Look up yonder. We live, let's see. We live right there. Oh, look at that. See that? Right there in the middle with the vertical love of God coming down and the horizontal love of Christ going out. We live right there in the middle in the intersection of those two loves as the body of Christ, right? So friends, we're in the spring season, beautiful weather this week. Soon we'll be outside at St. Andrews. But meanwhile, spring is in 10 days, 10 days. And so let's spring clean our hearts every day in the ways that I've described here. I hope and I pray this is meaningful for you and that you'll spring clean with me and let me know your thoughts, your questions, and we'll talk again soon. Enjoy your midweek moment today. Feel free to, I don't know why I'm doing this. This is, used to be the phone imagery, right? Hang up the phone, forward this on to your friends on Facebook or on some of your emails. Send it out. Make them aware of where our churches are and what time we worship and invite them to come and be with us. And we will continue the spring cleaning theme. I think we'll hear some more about it this coming Sunday. Amen. Amen. God bless your day. A blessed Lenten journey. A blessed spring cleaning. See you tonight for worship uh, during Lent at 7 o'clock or 6 o'clock for some fellowship. God bless you.